Hello world, I'm just here to make you think. This CEO Philly Trenches Hockey Raw coming at you live and direct with Philly Trenches Talk at the Dark episode 625. This is our 625 episode of Philly Trenches Talk at the Dark. And tonight we're going to talk about Philly Trenches versus Charleston White for disrespecting Gilly the Kids to see son cheese as well as disrespecting Philadelphia and we're going to get into Diddy's bandwagon vultures everybody that's coming out the Woolworths I'm talking about news anchors all these news people that deal with crime that's getting into this vigilante witch hunt on Diddy, you know, and the sad thing about it is, before this all happened and Diddy was, you know, moving around, doing what he do, ain't nobody had nothing to say about it, none of these reporters, none of that, and the, and the crazy thing is, it's an attack on our people, man, remember when Mayweather got in the altercation with one of his baby moms and he went to jail in Las Vegas and how big they blew that up, every time a celebrity that's black get in some type of trouble you have all these vulture white people come out of nowhere trying to crucify them. you know and then you have our people join joining that lynch mob that's what i gotta gotta call it what it is it's a lynch mob and one thing i don't i don't like bullies man and that's what it seemed like y'all doing it seemed like y'all bullying diddy on the internet in your own little way and I know why y'all throwing darts at him because he's wealthy it has, if he wasn't wealthy well none of y'all even think about this man at the end of the day y'all wait for somebody to fall so y'all can stomp him and you know what that's just human nature for some degree but conscious people they don't attack somebody when they down they either break it up or they step away from it they don't participate in it you feel what I'm saying? Now let's get into this Charleston White character. That Charleston White character, right? I'm gonna show y'all something that he did he a video. Fair use is act, free disclaimer, uh copyright infringements under the law of copyrights and all that. Philly trenches um is showing y'all this for educational purposes to show the youth because I'm on here, y'all can look at the description, I always put it in there, that I make these videos and I sometimes use parts of other people videos to teach the youth on educational purposes about Philly's past and people's past. And it's also to educate you, you know? Now Charleston White, he done did a lot of disrespectful things over the years and he only doing it for personal gain. He ain't doing it to help nobody. He ain't doing it because he had it hard in life. He's doing it because he just found a way to get some money. A nobody, a nobody from Texas come out of nowhere and turn into some type of Richard Pryor type of character and everybody watching him until he disrespects somebody in your family. It's all laughs and all, I can't believe he said that until he do it to somebody in your family. Even though Cheese, may he rest in peace, ain't related to me. But he's a young man who lost his life. And when you lose your life, you're supposed to let those rest in peace. You don't continue to taunt parents. You don't continue to taunt the dead. You're supposed to be an activist, Charleston White, for the youth, for the kids, for people that been in jail, whether they youth or an adult. But then you turn around and disrespect Philadelphia when a man asks you, you banned from Philly. I banned you from Philly. And when somebody brought it up, you said you never been in Philly. You rode past Philly to get to Atlantic City to go inside of an arena that seated 1,100 people. You say you sell out crowds and arenas and all that. You sell out crowds to do what? To talk about your own people? I want y'all to hear what this man said, man. Fair usage act under the guidelines, under the guidelines, 
you know, free disclaimer, fair use is act, copyright infringements and all that. I'm about to show y'all this, man. This video. Now, when I show y'all this video with this weirdo and what he's doing, don't be surprised. Don't even be shocked. Because nothing shocks me with this weirdo. Y'all hear me? I'm about to turn it up. I sold out. He tell me, he, watch this. Listen to this joke. Him right here. Six shows in Detroit, Michigan. In two feet of snow. With no promotion. I sold out of Oakland. Tommy T's, no promotion. This retard. He a retard. No, because the people, when they hear I'm coming, they coming. But like so a, nigga, I'm gonna keep a children's saying, book. Fuck these celebrity kids. I don't say they fuck a bunch of you celebrity. I don't say if I could have, when King Vaughn died, I'm the first nigga how to fuck King Vaughn. I said fuck his mama, fuck his baby. I even said fuck his baby. I even said fuck his baby. And they swear oh by God I will go die. And I went to Chicago, nigga, and sold out the promontory. And I. They're saying you can't go to Philly. I ain't, I, I ain't never been to Philly. I've been to Philly one time. I rode through Philly. Me and a producer, me and a promoter named Big Reed. I sold out a venue in Atlantic City, New Jersey, 1100 seats. I went That's through good. Philly and said I'd never come back. The streets was dirty. They got trash everywhere. They don't have no swimming pools. They don't have no playgrounds with color. It was all concrete. Creep fences and tore down houses and trash and rat infested, drug infested, and the children didn't even smile. I said, This is Yo, evil. Boy. How can Philly, when you look at the streets, they don't even have trash pickups to clean up the streets. The kids' minds is cluttered. The school districts is poor. The pregnancy rate is, is low. I, I looked at the statistics and I said, How can anybody thrive in Philadelphia? So why would a nigga want to go to Philly? Everybody dying and nobody's thriving there. Nobody, especially not the children. That's a cursed place. And I go where the grass is green. The grass ain't green now. Black people not. All right, y'all heard this weirdo talk his shit, right? You know, we got trash day. My trash day is on Wednesday. You know, people thriving. All my kids graduated from high school and the ones that's younger my daughters that's still in school they doing very good in school i go to the graduations when they graduate from high school vocational trades and all of that and kids out here are highly intelligent people make it in philadelphia all the time you know people go to school now it's trash everywhere you know, maybe when you live in Texas, where they got acres of land and all that, it's different, you know? But Philadelphia is one of the biggest cities in America. Money being made every day, millions of dollars being made every day, and every time somebody come to Philly to do a show, people come out, and the people that's performing get paid, you know? You can ask anybody from New York and New Jersey, they come to Philadelphia. When they come out to party and have a good time, it's Philly lit. You know, you roll past Philadelphia like a person ride past Philadelphia on the train. You don't stop. That's why you're so quick to talk about Philadelphia, man. You know, because you know if you stop in Philadelphia with the way you talk, you'll get left in Philadelphia. Yeah, you won't make it out of Philadelphia. You feel me? So you got away with talking about Chicago and all them other cities? Come to Philadelphia, motherfucker. Promote something. You know I mean? Come back to Jersey, nigga. Come, let me, let me find out you in Jersey. Ain't nobody gonna protect you, man. Can't nobody protect you from a wrath of individuals who don't give a fuck. You know? You think because you on the internet talking shit all these years about people that if you stopped in Philadelphia, you can sell out in all them other cities that's happy to see you, high, high, key, key, and want to get a good laugh. Come the fuck to Philadelphia. Come to Philadelphia, man. Anybody can easy spot you. All you hear to fell the fuck out. You know, 
that's why you, have, you got one fucking eye. You popped your eyeball out. You know, you're a disgrace to the human race of the black man. And you know why you're a disgrace to the black man? Because you a retard, nigga. You're not even a real fucking man. You got one fucking eye. You cry Windex. And you the only motherfucker I know that got one of them re... Like, you know, when a motherfucker got a head... Y'all see... No homo. Y'all see the shape of his head, right? Now, what man in their right mind? Hair is missing right here on his size. And they, it seems like he got a, a shape up in his head. <laughs> How you get a shape up in your fucking head? I'm going to show y'all this shit. I can't make this shit up, man. I'm going to show y'all this retarded ass, big head, motherfucking weirdo. Talking about he got kids and he been all his kids. Like, what man ain't right mind? Like, look at this shit. I can't make this up. Look at this nigga head, man. Look, look at this shit, man. This motherfucker got one of them hair diseases. His hair ain't fall. This shit just, I don't know if it just melted inside his head. Like, think about it. This nigga head all up here look like, you know how some people got their crater face? His head is crater. How the fuck is the top of your head crater, nigga? You know what that means? Look, look, look. I, I'm gonna let y'all see this this way. I can't make this up. Look at this motherfucker head, man. This is Charleston White. Yeah, you know I mean, it's like he got a shag in the front of his head, a baby shag, a baby mustache on the top of his forehead and everything else. <laughs> How the fuck you get a mustache and a baby shag in the front of your fucking forehead? You know what I mean, that nigga got a baby shag mustache in the top of his motherfucking forehead. No hair right here. I mean, he ain't got no hair here, no hair, none of them. All he got like is a line. That might not even be real hair. That nigga might have glued that shit on his head, man. He suffer. That's a disease. That's a disease of the blood. Nigga, you got a blood disease. You can never talk about nobody. And truth be told, nigga, you probably only got a few more years to live if that long. I ain't got you making it five more years, man. I own everything I love. I got that boy croaking internally in the next two to five years. And I, and I think he know that. And that's why he's so, like... Enthused to disrespect people He make his money on disrespecting people That's why he's banned from Philadelphia Let him come to fuck to Philly Let him come here And any motherfucking body that ever said any disrespectful thing To Philadelphia Step in this fucking city Yeah Yeah You best believe I have soldiers, lieutenants Captains and generals in Philadelphia that's waiting on these suckers that disrespect the city of Philadelphia. It's fully trenches, nigga. The trenches. I'm talking about ain't nobody gonna make nothing. The kids ain't gonna prosper. Kids graduate every year. Graduate every year. Now don't get me wrong. You have people out here that's in the trenches doing what they do with the guns and all that. That's life, man. Life ain't fair. But the majority, and don't get me wrong, I'm gonna fuck with statistics. That you look the fuck up. And it's the God honest truth. And I ain't making this up. Now we might not have the best school system. But I tell you. We got more highly intelligent children in Philadelphia than any fucking city. And you know how I know? All you got to do is listen to the rap music. You know how hard it is to rap the way these youngins rap in my city? We the land of the spitters. And to learn how to rap and recite and make people dance and tell a story, that's genius. So there's a lot of genius come out of Philadelphia. That's why so many rap artists. That's why so many people that know how to rap and be creative and to be creative. That's intelligence. You know what I mean? That means they have something up here. And we the trendsetters. And we got style. I'm the one that got people saying people crashing out. Two years ago, I said it on the internet. Now everybody's saying it. People even talk like you know, all these top YouTubers, all these top YouTubers, Hakan, excuse me, Hassan Campbell, Gully TV, and the rest of these. When I hear them talk on the internet, I hear them talk like me. They got my lingo. 
I don't care what nobody say. Because I watched them dudes before I even got on the internet and they wasn't talking like that. They talk like me because they watch me. Yeah, I'm the one made up the word crashing out. Yeah, because I said I didn't want to crash out. I said that on the internet two years ago. Now everybody's saying it. I'm the one got people wearing Timberlands. You feel what I'm saying? I'm a trendsetter. We trendsetters in Philadelphia. People mimic our style. When Meek Mills came out with his rap song, he had everybody sounding like him. He had everybody saying they in a bag. He had everybody, every rapper that comes out of Philadelphia that comes out with something, people mimic. Whether is Will Smith on a Prince of Bel Air, people mimic his style, the way he talked, the way he dressed. Come on, man, who don't mimic Philly? We got some of the best R&B rock and roll singers that ever came out in the industry. McFadden and Whitehead, the Blue Notes. Yeah. And everybody and their grandma still sing McFadden and Whitehead's song, Ain't No Stopping Us Now. You go to any event in sports, you're going to hear them blasting, Ain't No Stopping Us Now. We on the move. Philly, nigga. Philly. Every boxer that box with the shoulder roll, Mayweather, that's Philly style. So don't talk that shit about Philly when you mimic everything the fuck we do and say. You understand what I'm saying? Believe that. So all that shit Charleston White saying, he only said it because he got a mouth and he got people that's going to watch him. Because like he said, he never stepped foot in Philly. He might have drove past Philly. It might have seen trash. Philly a big place. It ain't, it's two million people in Philly. Two to four million people in Philly. You seen one part. You ain't see the whole Philly. You know, that's like if I was to go to Texas and see an area. When I went to Arizona, I was in Avondale, Scottsdale, and in Phoenix. And Phoenix was the ghetto part. When we went there last, because I was trying to get all these pounds of weed. That's why I was in Arizona in 2005. You feel what I'm saying? And if you ain't from the trenches, stay the fuck out the trenches. That's how I know Charleston White ain't from the trenches. Because he said he seen trash everywhere. Motherfuckers from the trenches, when they see trash and sneakers hanging on a the wire, they know they damn, they home. Y'all see me make movies in, y'all see me make videos in Atlantic City when I was buying some weed in the trenches of Atlantic City. And you ain't see that, I was by myself. And I was filming. And y'all seen it. I ain't feel uncomfortable. I fell at home because I'm from the trenches. Charleston White, you're not from the trenches, man. You're from the suburbs, just like Gully TV. So all that gangster shit you talk and all the guns you buy, you bought all that arsenal because you was a pussy. Talking about if somebody kill your son, you're going to lose your mind and you're going to lose your character. You're going to cry like a bitch. You ain't going to do shit, nigga. You're going to press charges, you hoe. You might come up with some motherfucking money to try to find out who did it. Because you ain't busting your motherfucking gun. You ain't built like that, man. You know? And I can't wait until the time when you be the biggest laughing stock on the internet. When they run down on you and put you in world star. You know, you keep thinking everybody cool with you. You said a lot of disrespectful shit to the dead. You know? And the universe going to punish you. Now, what if the universe take your fucking son? What you gonna do then? You gonna turn mean and evil and really just start disrespecting people? You know? The, your curse is how you look. Your curse is how you look. Ain't nobody gotta touch you. You can look in the mirror and get mad at yourself. Cause you look retarded. You look like you was on a half a school bus. A half a stick of margarine, nigga. You was on that half a stick of butter margarine, nigga. That's what you was on. You a window licker, nigga. You lick windows when you was a kid, nigga. And then when you found out you was a retard, you want to hang with the, the kids that act tough and cool, and you caught that nut-ass case, and your homie shot the white boy and killed him, and you bragged on the internet like you did. You ain't fucking bust your gun, nigga. You was in that juvenile place fucking other little boys and getting fucked, nigga. You think I can't tell your personality, your character? Because if you was in a juvenile placement with me, you'd have been getting beat the fuck up, smacked up on, getting your snacks taken and everything, man. You'd been crying like a pussy. So I don't know how them juvenile places and facilities is in Texas, but I know in New York and Philadelphia, they some rough spots, man. 
They some rough juvenile spots. You ain't never been to nothing rough, no juvenile joints. You know, you told on your friends and that's how you got out of jail and that's why they still locked up because you the one act like someone. You went up in your friend's house, stole the 357, you know, and then y'all went to the mall hooky school to try to steal some starter jackets. Get the fuck out you nut ass. You fucking weirdo. You weird, man. You trying to be somebody. You're not Charleston White. I remember a few years ago. You have no idea, man. A few years ago, I ain't going to say what individual. They're like, yo, I'm going to... Somebody really wanted to take that boy life a few years ago. I'm like, who? Man, fuck that nut. And I understood why he said it now, man. And there's somebody that would have really did it. Would have really came to Texas and found him and handled that, man. Believe that. You know? But he stay in Texas. He might hop around in certain cities and act like a clown. He remind me of one of them dudes that you take the ball and you throw it and they fall in the water. That's him. But when you disrespect the dead and say you're going to piss on somebody's grave and they son is shitting out um, maggots and all that, what the fuck you think you're going to be doing when you die? What the fuck you think your son going to be doing when he die? You think he's just going to automatically just not go in the dirt and don't be around that type of same shit? Huh? That's what you believe? That's what you believe, Charleston? Charleston White, do you believe that? I thought you was going to be in a celebrity boxing match. What happened? You know? I'm, if you put the gloves on with me in a boxing match, man, I would just take my time just really hurting you every round. I wouldn't even hit you in your face. I would just hit you with all body shots. Break them fucking ribs. Keep hitting that kidney, man. And watch you shit on yourself in front of millions of people, man. You know, you the type of person, you never supposed to give a sucker a chance, you never supposed to give a lame, a sucker a break, never, you supposed to never give a sucker a chance, never give a, never give a sucker a break, never give a lame a chance. And you the definition of a sucker. And as soon as you take your foot off his neck, you gonna pay for it. That's why y'all gotta keep your foot on his neck. And a lot of y'all YouTubers don't know how to just crucify that dude with y'all words. Because y'all afraid that he's going to come back with some shit and destroy y'all. Words don't hurt me. A lot of y'all are mentally weak with words. Charleston White don't have no power. He's just a shit-talking motherfucker. And he makes his money off using profanity and saying things ain't nobody saying. Disrespectful things. Against gang members, deceased gang members and all that. Knowing damn well, if anybody was to see him, like really see him, man, that man is shit on himself, man. You know what I mean? That's why he got to be strapped. That's why, and that shit don't mean nothing because you strapped. What that mean? You know I mean? People got killed with their gun on them. That don't mean anything. You know? You suffer. You have tainted blood. You have craters on the top of your head, in your skull, in your in your skin. Like that ain't normal to have that type of hair. And I'm way older than you and I got all my hair. I don't have that problem. And so that means your genetic makeup is fucked up. Your DNA. And I don't think you ever met your father. You never talk about your, matter of fact, you said something that really made me wake up to realize why you act the way you act. You admitted that your great-grandfather was a white man. And that's why your last name is White. You said your grandfather owned, had owned all these acres of land and he was a slave. He was a white man that was a racist white man that had all these acres of land. So that's what your DNA come from. You ain't, you ain't come from nothing that's authentic of our race, your blood is already mixed up, man. And the reason why, you, and not only that, your great, your grandmother, great grandmother who was messing with that white man, only was messing with him because he had money. And he could have really had her working for him and he could have took the pussy. Yeah. And then he decided, I guess, to take care of him because I don't see it. I don't see no black strong woman dealing with a racist white man that got land. And if she is going to deal with him, it's about 
inheriting that land. Because guess what you said? You said your, you and your mother and y'all inherited that, inherit that wealth from that racist white man. You know? So you got some land based on racism. You know? Jim Crow. You know? So you, you ain't all that black activist shit you talking and get the fuck out of here, man. You ain't from the trenches, man. You're from the suburbs. And you try to trick people and thinking you from the trenches. You're not from the trenches of Texas. Because if you was, you'd have been met George Foreman. You'd have knew him. He's from the trenches of Texas. You know? And the rest of them brothers that's in the rap industry, Jay Prince and them, they from the trenches of Texas. You're not from the trenches of Texas. Because if you was, you'd have been cool with Jay Prince and them. You're from the suburbs. You're a suburban baby. You want them um, fortunate black kids that got teased and picked on. And now this is your way of disrespecting your own people that you think you better than. You ain't better than no fucking body. And not only that, you call your son essay or something. So I already know that your son ain't black. You got a Mexican son. And I ain't got nothing against Mexicans. At all. Because I fuck with Mexicans. Heavy. You know what I mean? But you, my friend, is a fraud. You know? All that shit you talk, you just all talk. You about to buy a million guns. You know? You fuck with the police. You deal with the police. You get people locked up. You come to people, court hearings, to testify against them and all that. That's why the young boy filmed you that time in the courtroom telling you done told on a lot of people, man. Y'all got this rat on the internet. Y'all going to go see this motherfucker that's bringing his people down? Now, my own thing is this. What people in their right mind will endorse, pay money to see someone like Charleston White that don't give a fuck about his own people, man? You know? I swear I wish this boy would just get in the ring with me, man, so I can really disrespect him with these hands. Like, really show him a lesson, you know? He's not gonna come to Philly because he's banned from Philly. He can't come to Philly. I'm gonna show y'all the video again with this motherfucker say out his mouth about our city, man. You know, he just on his on here talking shit about Philly as if, keep showing this dumbass children book, dumbass nigga. Watch this fuck boy ass boy, here we go. I'm saying, but the celebrities hate me. You know why? Cause they ain't for the people. You ain't for the people either. They ain't for the people. Big head. And that's why they his hair. Nigga, cause I'm for the people made by the people. You ain't for no fucking people, pussy. I sold out six shows in Detroit, Michigan. In two feet of snow. With no promotion. I sold out of... Y'all can't open, tell he retarded the way he talk and the way he... Nothing. Was. No, cause yeah. the people, when they hear I'm coming, they coming. So nigga, I'm gonna keep... Saying fuck these celebrity kids. I don't say they fuck up What's up? I don't the boy when King Von died, I was the third nigga hollering fuck King Von. I said on. fuck Check his mama. Check on What's up, dude? Fuck his baby. I even said fuck his baby. I even said fuck his baby. And they swear by God I was gonna die. And I went to Chicago, nigga. And Adam sold out the promontory. Thanks for the love. And now they're saying you can't go to Philly. I I ain't, I ain't never been to Philly. I've been to Philly one time. I rode through Philly. Me and a producer, me and a promoter named Big Reed. I sold out a venue in Atlantic City, New Jersey, 1100 seats. I went through yeah, Philly and said I'd never come back. The streets was dirty. They got trash everywhere. They don't have no swimming pools. Yes, we do. They don't have no playgrounds. Yes, we do. It was all country. Creek fences and tore down houses and trash and it was rat infested, drug infested and the children didn't even smile. I said this is evil. How can Philly when you look at the streets, they don't even have trash pickups to clean up the streets. The kids minds is cluttered. The school districts is poor. The pregnancy rate is, is low. I, I looked at the statistics and I said how can anybody thrive in Philadelphia? So why would a nigga wanna go to Philly? Everybody dying and nobody's thriving there. Nobody, especially not the children. That's a cursed place. And I 
First of all, every city we got every city got murders. Some cities got more homicides than other cities. One year it might be DC with all the bodies. One year it might be New York with all the bodies. One year it might be Philly with all the bodies. One year it might be Detroit with all the bodies. Boston. But every city got bodies, man. It always been like that. Ain't nothing fucking change. As far as the school as far as the playgrounds, we got a lot of playgrounds in Philadelphia. We got a lot of swimming pools in the summertime and all that. Kids graduate every year. Proms and everything. So I don't know what the fuck he talking about. My daughter graduated from high school next year. You know what I mean? I got a 13-year-old, a 14-year-old, a 17-year-old that's still in school. You know what I'm saying? And my other daughter, she like 11, 11, 12. You know what I mean? And they're all in school. And my daughter, 17, is about to graduate from high school. She in private school. You know what I mean? So what the fuck is he talking about? How can you say all these things about Philadelphia if you never stepped foot in Philadelphia? You might have sold out six shows in Detroit. All right. But that ain't Philly, though. You know? You thinking if you come to Philly and go backstage, ain't nobody going to crack you upside your motherfucking head. You ain't go to Chicago. You ain't go there and do six shows and go behind stage because you already know what time it is, isn't it? You ain't fucking, you, you, I mean, you retarded, but you're not stupid. That's a difference. You could be retarded, fucked up here, but you are intelligent enough not to go to certain cities, man. Because who the fuck gonna protect you if you come to free that producer you said you was with? Okay. Y'all both be on the side of that motherfucking road or in the, in the backstage pushing up daisies. What the fuck is wrong with you, man? This shit ain't no joke to about motherfuckers is getting killed in there. This shit is real, nigga. I don't know what planet you live on. You know, Texas ain't always been sweet. You think you're from Texas, the best place. Don't you know, at one point in time, when President Kennedy got killed in Texas, ain't nobody want to go in Texas at all. It was like taboo to be in Texas. Texas was looked upon as a cursed fucking place to be. Now all of a sudden, you forget about, oh, you wasn't born. You don't know about that history. You don't know about no fucking history. You don't know about shit. You, that's a racist-ass fucking place you live in. So I don't know what the fuck planet you on. Oh, I know why you didn't, you didn't, you wasn't raised in the ghetto. You was raised in the suburbs. You so happened to want to be a bad guy and hooky school and go into the mall and steal jackets. And then when the hero guy try to Grab y'all from stealing out the mall. Not you, but the one somebody you was with handled their business. And you told on them. Fucking rat. Yeah, your friends that had the heart, you know what I mean? And the white boy was fixing his car, saw what was going on. Grabbed you motherfucking weak ass little pussies and started trying to fight to get out of it, y'all. You know what I mean? It's the fuck guy. Cow, you're a coward for that, man. You're a coward. You know? And what you do under pressure, you fold it like a fucking cardboard box. You told on your friends, and that's why they still doing life. You know? You live in fear. You know? You got them boys' life. You got them caught up in some bullshit and told on them, and you think that you you honorable. You're not honorable. Some of you for the kids. How are you for the kids and the shit that goes on in the trenches, but yet and still you talk about a young man that got killed in the trenches that you don't even know. Some of you don't care about celebrity kids and none of that. You know? Now, had you been a celebrity and had kids that was, you know, celebrity kids, you wouldn't be talking like that, man. You just jealous of other people that got more money than you. So you're gonna talk bad about them. You know what I mean? You feel what I'm saying? So when I see that nut ass nigga disrespecting Philadelphia, saying we ain't got no trash day, and all this other dumb shit out of his mouth, that's a motherfucking lie, man. You know? I don't know what planet you live on or where you from, but where I'm from, when you got a fucked up headline like that, and you got craters in your head, Something wrong with you, you know? You you grew up fucked up. You did a total, you say, 12 years in jail, right? 
as a juvenile, right? If you did 12 years as a juvenile, and you went, I think you ain't do that much time. You, you got out early. Because you took the stand on your own friends, man. And then you in that juvenile facility, they probably had you on Thorazine, had you medicated. And that's why you act the way you act. Because that medication ate your fucking brain up, nigga. I know what happened. That medication, when you was locked up, ate your hair the fuck up. You know? Just imagine, man. Just imagine a motherfucker like this in your school. This big head motherfucker. Just imagine this motherfucker in your classroom. Just imagine this motherfucker in prison, in the yard, talking shit. What do you think will happen to him? He's gonna get knocked the fuck out. You know what I mean? This nut. Look, look at his hair, man. Who you know got a mustache where the hairline's supposed to be at? A baby shag. Like, what motherfucker don't cut that? And you get money and you look like that. Look at this motherfucker. You can tell. I'm going to show. Oh, I ain't peeped that. Y'all peeped that? Look at his head. You see how the wrinkles is right there? You see that spot right there? He got a plate in his head. And he got a glass eye. That's a plate. Oh, I'm messing with a motherfucker that really is a retard. That motherfucker got a plate in his head. I can't make it up. How the fuck? See how my wrinkles go all the way when I do that to my head? That shit go all the way around. His shit like right here and all this is a plate. Yeah, I ain't making it up. Look, look. I ain't making it up. Look. See, that's the plate and that's the half wrinkle. That's the plate and that's the half wrinkle and that's the glass eye. He got, and y'all seen the video. I got a short video. This motherfucker get eyeball out. Yeah, talking about you got hit in the eye with a slingshot. No, nigga, you got a plate in your head. You got a real metal plate in your head, and your eye came out. Yeah, what really happened? Was you born like that? Or did somebody really fuck you around when you got out because you ratted? You ratted on some dudes, man. I don't know if they was from the trenches and you from the suburbs. But I think this might have happened to you while you was in juvenile placement. And them juveniles found out because you probably had to talk in a group, talk about what you did. You were on a lot of young boys that probably killed their parents, their brothers and all that. So they put you in a motherfucking mental hospital for all them years. But while you was in there, somebody found out and gave you the business, man. Because think about it, you did 12 years and after that you got a job and all that and you wasn't in the trenches. How the fuck you lose your eyeball? How you get a plate in your head? Yeah. Somebody you got hit in the head, eye with a slingshot. Get the fuck out of here. You think you talking to? Willie Lump Lump? You think you talking to Roger the Rabbit or something, man? You know, I see right through your bullshit, man. You curse, nigga. You curse with ugly looks. You curse with fucked up jeans. You don't know your daddy, nigga. You never talk about your daddy because you don't know him. I think you want them test tube babies. I think somebody dropped you off at the doorsteps in a rich neighborhood, and that's how you got in the suburbs. Yeah. That's what I think. I think that you made all that shit up about your grandparents and all that. I really think that you got the type of parents that's related. I think your mommy and daddy's is brothers and sisters. Yeah, uncle and, and niece or some shit like that. Because your genetic makeup is fucked up. What happened to your hair, sir? What happened to your hair, sir? Where that go at, buddy? I seen people like that. But usually they get that shit in the back of their neck. We call them star crunches. All that little, you know, you get the fucked up clippers. And you get all them bumps in the back of your head. That motherfucker got that shit all in his hair. Damn, man. What you were using the same razor as the dog? <laughs> that nigga was using the same razor as his dog, man. As a mangy mutt in the street. That nigga let somebody cut his hair with some dirty clippers. <laughs> hey, listen, man. Hey, look at that nigga here, though, man. How the fuck he get a mustache on his forehead? <laughs> that nigga got a plate. He got a plate in his head. He got a glass eye. He cry Windex. And everything up here is like a shadow. That nigga, I mean, like a... Like a, um, a shag. That nigga, 
How the fuck you get a mustache? <laughs> right here. <laughs> hey, yo, man. I swear to God, man, this motherfucker right here. I wouldn't even want to be on the internet if I looked like, I looked at it like this. Hair and all, I couldn't be on the internet, man. I couldn't, man. It wouldn't even look right. You know? You imagine if, if I'm just for all the men. Because a woman got unconditional love for their sons. But if you was a father and and a girl was like this, your son. <laughs> Here and all. All right, that ain't my motherfucking son. Man, I want a DNA. I want to go on Murray. I want to go on everything, man. I want to do it all. You know? Uh, damn, it just born like a crackhead. He is a crackhead, man. I'm gonna let y'all see the whole. You like a bobblehead. This nigga's a real bobblehead. Look, look, look. See the bobblehead? Nigga with 85 pounds talking that gangster shit about Philly. Fuck out. He can't talk about my city. Nut. I don't give a fuck how what you assume, nigga. You from Texas, man. You can't talk. You from, and I ain't disrespecting Texas. I'm just saying, you from the suburbs of Texas. You're not from the trenches. Scarface don't know you, nigga. Bushwick and them don't know you, man. Ghetto bastards don't know you. What's the boy name? Little Bushwick. On Halloween, came on the weekend. The ghetto boys trick or treat. Yeah. My mind's playing tricks on me, nigga. I came out 91, nigga. And I had the red bands, nigga. My mind's playing tricks on me. Got anybody who rot up, I had to turn around, man. Because I was in the trenches like that. In 91, this motherfucker probably was still in that juvenile joint. Told on his homies, man. And y'all let this motherfucker in the door, man. And let him get clout and give money. And this is the shit I be talking about. When I say never give a sucker a break, never give a, a lame a chance, this is the reason why, man. This motherfucker make us look bad. He make our race of people look fucked up. Believe that, man. Disrespect my city, man. I swear I, could get, I wish I could get these boys in the ring, man. And the boy has, and the boss's name, Sub Zero, gonna send his viewers to my channel, and the viewer gonna make a comment and say, Sub Z Sub sent me. I hope you wasn't talking about him. Like what? I had to break down to that weird. Like, first of all, he stole my content, and he stole a few of my videos and put it on his video, his live. But wanna get ten toes, the boy ten toes down my credit for my shit. And they gonna call me an old man, so that's why I said something to him. I wasn't picking on Sub Zero. I just had to G check him. And I want to beat him the fuck up for disrespect me calling out my name and stealing my content, nigga. I don't know you, man. I don't know you to use my content to go at Gully TV. Don't use my shit to fight another man. Use your own content, nigga. Why? Cause you ain't got no fucking content. You ain't got no material. Cause all the shit you show, motherfucker, is the next man's shit. Fuck is wrong with these dudes, man? When a real motherfucker like me come on here, these pussies get scared. You feel me? You know what I mean? Fuck is wrong with these dudes, man. Beat you the fuck up. I don't these reading glasses so I can see the comments. You know? But I know that pussy ass Charleston White ain't gonna box me. He ain't gonna come to Philly. None of them suckers that be on the internet is gonna step foot in Philly and talk that gangster shit, man. And I don't need no motherfucking gun. This is my gun. This motherfucker right here and this motherfucker right here. But if you take it there, then you can get anything else you want. Charleston White got an arsenal of guns. They ain't gonna bust none of them unless he target practice. You know, ain't no way in the world I got that many guns in there. And I'm in the trenches like that. And I ain't going to war. You got me fucked up. Ain't no way in the world my guns gonna be getting dusty. And all that and getting uh dust. We got me fucked up. What we what? Shit, I turn right to that Puerto Rican boy who had that 44. Soon he bought, he started arguing with everybody. What? What'd you say? <laughs> Soon he bought that 44. Long nose, no homo. That motherfucker said, What? Because all he going, if he say, I'll be right back. Either you going to leave and be a bitch, or you going to stay there and take that shell, nigga. Or go strap up, tool up, nigga, and go at it. You know? He going to show all his guns because it's legal in Texas to have that shit, man. First of all, real nigga ain't gonna show you his arsenal. Now, I'll show y'all a little something, something. The Draco, a few handguns, some shells, 50 shell casings from New Year's. You know what I'm saying, though? You know what I mean? Not really, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Not showing, you know what I mean? He wanna show you his whole arsenal. 
because he's a pussy. You know, get robbed, get jumped, get disrespected on the stage. He's just a nut, man. Y'all let these nut ass motherfuckers come on the internet and fake y'all out. And it's always the nuts, the nerds, the geeks, the weirdos on the internet that everybody want to laugh and joke with. But when a real motherfucker like me come on here, it's all, what do we want? What the fuck you mean what I want, nigga? I get in where I fit in. You know, I'm used to taking shit and taking over shit, nigga. I'm not the ordinary, I'm extraordinary. You know, I'm not the type of person to wait in line at the amusement park. I get in front of any fucking bike. Either I'm going to get on that ride or I'm not going to get on the ride. But I'm not waiting in no fucking line. I won't ever wait for anything. You understand what I'm saying? So when these motherfuckers talk they shit and get on here, and then when I get on here, like, damn, he the real deal. This nigga ain't the real deal. See, we've been fooled. A lot of y'all been fooled when y'all see these dudes over here thinking they the real deal, and then when they expose they self. I ain't really got to expose them. They self-destruct on their own. Because one thing I learned, a sucker can't fool you completely. He might fool you the first time. But after that, like, oh, this nigga's a, he's a, he's a fraud. But a real motherfucking thoroughbred is always going to be a real thoroughbred. You know, ain't a lot of them. There's a lot of suckers, few thoroughbreds. There's a lot of suckers, but there's a few thoroughbreds. You feel me? It's like in sports. There's always that one athlete that's better than everybody. And everybody else is average. I ain't never been an average athlete. Never. Never. Not in basketball. Not in track. Not in football. Never. I always came in first. Always. Came in first place. Always was MVP. Always was the best football player. Always had the best jump shot. Fast. I, I played defense. And all that. My first step, I mean, once I get past you, it was over. You know what I mean? And that's, that's me. My genetic makeup. And I'm not even bragging. I'm just letting you know that it's easy to weed out a sucker. You know? And he's the definition of a sucker. He remind me. I swear, I don't know why. But Charleston White remind me when he talking, start acting stupid. He even remind me of Cat in the Hat. Thing one and thing two and Cat in the Hat when they going through the... He, I swear, I don't know why, but he remind me of Cat in the Hat. Cat in the Hat is skinny. Thing one and thing two is skinny. He look like... He look like the Cat in the Hat characters. Skinny, big ass head, goofy, evil, mistress. That's him. If Cat in the Hat was a person, if Cat in the Hat was a person, it'd be this nigga here. Look at the dent in his head, y'all. I ain't making this up. Look at the dent in his head. The man has a plate in his head. I cannot make it up. Look at the plate. I'm going to show y'all this one. That nigga got a plate in his head, man. Look. See the dent? See the dent right there? That's a plate. He's Frankenstein. Somebody made him up. He's not real. He's not genetically a full man. His hair fucked up. He's not even in his 50s yet. And all his shit is gone. You know what I mean? His shit is crater, man. You know? One eye willy. He got one fucking eye. Matter of fact, I'm going to show y'all him popping his eye out. Watch this. I ain't making it up. Watch this shit. Charleston White pops out his eyeball. Now, first of all, I was going to show y'all my video of him popping his eye out. But I'm going to show you this nigga ain't really got an eyeball. Look, I ain't making this shit up. Look. Fair use is that. Free disclaimer. Oh, I do not own the right to this material. Fair use is that. Free disclaimer under the policies and all that. Look, see? Y'all think I was fucking lying about that nigga? I even made a video with that nigga gonna pop his eye. I watched this nigga pop his eyeball out. Look, I ain't gonna lie. Science to you. ain't that good, Sean. Look. Now I know Jews is some bad motherfucker, but they ain't that bad where they put a uh, take a dead, put an eye back in a no eye and make that motherfucker have sight. Now that motherfucker do a lot of shit, but they can't transplant no eye. Now, uh, now let me stop saying this shit. I don't know, but let me just. Say it from a nigga. Oh no no don't take it out. Hey, don't take it out, nigga. Shut up. 
You want me to believe it's an open, empty space right here. That nigga. Yeah, don't take it out, nigga. Shut up. Look, look. Don't fuck it out right here. Oh, no, no, don't take it out. Hey, don't take it out, nigga. Nigga, shut up. You want me to believe it's an open, empty space. Can you imagine right here. smacking the shit out of him and the other eyeball pop out? Now, you gotta understand something. This motherfucker got a plate in his head. One eyeball come out, his hair fucked up. That's why he's so busy coming at people that got more than him. That's why he talked about the dead. Cause he look like he's walking dead. Like a zombie, man. What motherfucker takes the eyeball out? That's nasty, man. Don't you know your pores is open? You put a big ass fucking well hook in that eyeball and throw that motherfucker in the ocean, man. And wait for a megalodon to come get that nigga. <laughs> Look, man, I can't make this show. Look at that nigga eyeball, man. Oh my God, Riff. That nigga got one eye, one eye, one Mississippi. One Mississippi hat. Mississippi. Three Mississippi. <laughs> you know what I mean? See, this shit is easy for me to grind this nigga the fuck up, man. I got both of mine, and they light brights, man. They hazel, man. He got one eye willy, man, talking shit about Philly. One eye willy talking about Philly. One eye willy talking about Philly. You know what I mean? Oh, hot, leave him alone, man. He a handicap. I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. Handicap, one eye, plate in the head. Niggas die every day, B. Niggas die every day, B. For less than that, man. Niggas die with two eyes. Nigga die in a wheelchair. Nigga die. It's just life, man. You're going to die from something. You're going to die. You ain't going to live forever. You know, but while you here, you're not going to disrespect my motherfucking city. I'm going to fuck who you is. Who the fuck you think is on the internet? Probably be an activist. You're on the mayor. You're on the top cops. You're going to juvenile facilities talking to the youth. And then you turn around and talk about somebody deceased, son. Like, say you piss on his grave and all that. Like, what the fuck? All because... He said what he said. He hurt your feelings. Your feelings was hurt all your fucking life, man. Talk, you've been talked about all your life because you's a fucking weird nigga. And then when you get mad, you want to talk about people, man. Get mad at yourself, man. Get mad at your mother for not telling you who your daddy is, man. Get mad at them people, man. Get mad at the fact that you fucked up. Get mad at yourself, man. No way in the world I could be in this world looking like that and mad at the world and everybody else if I was fucked up like that, man. I'd be too humble, man. You know what I mean? I'd be focused on my other eye. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have time to be focused on nobody else. I'd be focused on my one eye, trying to figure out how my hair got fucked up, trying to figure out who my daddy is, and all that. You know? Scott them boys sitting in the penitentiary for the rest of their life because you told on them and it was your idea. You claimed that you went in somebody's crib in the suburbs, snuck in this girl's house, stole her daddy 357 that she showed it to you. You snuck in the house, stole her gun, and now you think you a big bag, motherfucker, because you got a gun. And leave your school, go hook in. I think you're in eighth or seventh grade. You go to the mall. You know what I mean? From the suburbs. I don't know why you got to steal a jacket. And y'all go in the Foot Locker, one of them stores, steal some starter jackets, run out the mall, and a motherfucker fixing his car, some white man, play the hero, tackle y'all, and you claim you said shoot the motherfucker. That's what you claim that you said. And then out of nowhere, when y'all get locked up and busted and disgusted, you want to tell on anybody. You got a story to tell. I mean, what plan am I on with a rat or somebody that ratting on somebody and bragging about it? Get the stage. You know, because I really think people think that something is wrong with you, even though it is something wrong with you. Now, I just want to know how you got out that mental hospital. How you convinced them to let you go? Oh, I know why. Because you made a deal with the DA to tell on three motherfuckers that you was with. It was four of y'all, and you told on all three of them. You got them life in Texas. They probably on the chain gang. The lucky thing is they was young because they, they wasn't young. They probably gave them a the death penalty. You know, and they probably scared you with the death penalty and you told, man. So that tough shit you talking, man, I ain't even trying to hear it. Because you ratted on your friends, man. You ratted on your friends, man. And you talking this extra Humphrey Bogart shit and you ratchet to it. 
told on all three of your friends, and they sitting in prison, mad as shit, as they probably heard, you doing what you doing, and that making money and all that, and you acting like ain't nothing ever happened. You know, and the crazy thing is, your friends might have been from the suburbs too, because they, they might have been from the suburbs too, because had they been from the trenches, they homeboys would have got at you when you came home. Talking about you joined the gang and all that. You ain't joined no fucking gang. But if you joined the gang like you said you did, and you ratted, they'd have killed you, nigga. In that juvenile joint, or when you came home, and you still alive, and you still walking around Texas like nothing ever happened? What part of Texas you walking around, sir? How are you still breathing, sir? Yeah, I done seen you, the videos you on the phone with the police talking about you about to come in a city and you need escorts and all that. You live in fear, man. You live in fear, man. And you, it's time that you get pulled off that high horse you're on. You know? Because for real, for you played out. And you knew you fell off. So by you trying to make a comeback, you're going to talk about giving the kids to see, son? Like, I mean, like, I can't, I can't, I don't understand that, man. And then when your son die, or something happened to him, then what? Then what? You don't want to see all that tough shit you talk. Talking about somebody do something to your son, you're going to lose it. Your whole personality going to change. You ain't going to do shit. But try to get the boy locked the fuck up. Talking about you the kids was promoting don't snitch. And then the boy kill his son. The boy still out there talking about, man, you wouldn't have promoted no snitching. You that came in Philly and killed the boy. You get the fuck out. You wouldn't have done shit, you bitch. Yeah, I mean, no boy, he ain't gonna be that nigga's a bitch, man. Charleston White is a straight bitch. You know? He just ain't get beat the fuck up like by no real motherfuckers like Philly niggas, man. He never had a Philly ass whooping. He don't know how I feel to really get beat the fuck up. He might have lost the eye. You know what I mean? But he ain't never get physically fucked up. You know? I think he ran into the wall running from a motherfucker or something. You know, or somehow he's in a car accident or DUI or some shit like that. Or, or somehow he got fucked up in a juvenile joint. I don't know. But it's a mystery how the lines on your head, your shit stop right here and the rest is a plate, nigga. Now, I ain't never seen a nigga with a half of a motherfucking... Uh, like, you never, who you ever known to see a nigga with half wrinkle on their forehead? Like a half of a wrink, wrinkle here and the rest of that shit flat. Come on, man. Something ain't right. Something. How, 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 how Campbell said, something, something just ain't right. <laughs> something ain't right with you, with you, lad. Something ain't right with you. We about to find out, though. We know you got one eye. That's not, you know, that's not even a question. We know that. I've been you that. I knew that years ago. I just want to know why, how the fuck you can just stand there. Well, look, 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 look. I can't make this shit up. Now, he, it ain't like he making a face. This nigga just standing there, talking regular, and you gonna see half, see how you can see all that right here, all these wrinkles. When I do like that, watch his forehead. Watch, I'm gonna show you this. Watch this nigga, I, I can't make it up. How the fuck you get half of a wrinkle, like boom, boom, and right here is a circle. Like, what the fuck is going on? What's gonna jump out, another eyeball? You a cyclops or something, nigga? How the fuck get half a wrinkle and the rest ain't it's a circle? Wrinkle in a circle. And that's a dent, nigga. Yeah. So somebody must have hit you in your head so hard that it popped your eyeball out and gave you a plate right here. That's that must have been a hell of a force. Now I wonder who just like really went like power man, like like really like Iron Man. The motherfucker about to have brass knuckles on or something. And just said, this diggle that rack right there, hold him down. And just teed off on you. And knocked you. Can you imagine that force knocked his eyeball out? That was some hell of a force, man. Or a dog locked on his head and his eye popped out. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how the eyeball came out and how he got the plate. And how is it half of a, how you get half of a line on his forehead? <laughs> Y'all can't make this shit up, man. Now I see. Now I know why he smoke crack. Now I see. Yeah, you know I mean that shit forced him to get high. And see, back in the day, them young boys was getting high in the West Coast off crack. In the Midwest, they used to smoke crack in beer cans, crush them like bend them, or Pepsi cans. When I was at Glen Mills, the young boys from out the West Coast and the Midwest used to tell me 
They said, yeah, we just, I swear to God, he just what he told me. This white, two white kids told me this. He said, yeah, I used to smoke crack. That's what he said. One was from West Virginia. I forget what Bam, we call him Bam Bam. He looked just like Bam Bam off the Flintstone. And the way he said it, these motherfuckers were smoking crack with their mother through beer cans and Pepsi cans. A law he. I'm not making this shit up. And I'm looking at this motherfucker like, you smoke crack with your mother? I mean, I understand you getting high with your friends, like smoking weed or something. We talking about crack cocaine. And then, you know, they what's their specialty? What's their number one drug? Crystal meth. That's the, that's the kicker. And they love that shit in Texas. Yeah, I think he smoked that meth. He look like he a meth smoker, beer drinker, crooked eye sipper. God damn, you crooked eye sipper, out of town pie flipper. Damn, I know when that song came, my nigga was jamming off that. The crooked eye sipper, nigga pop his eye out. <laughs> Yo. I'm telling you, man, watch that nigga, man. Don't support that weird motherfucker, man. Because you don't talk about kids like that. You don't talk about nobody's son like that, man. Let that young man rest in peace, you know? Been on here long enough. You got enough money, man. Don't let or don't continue to talk about people you don't know just to gain the bag. If you don't know how to take that money and turn it to some real money, then you're a fool, man, because you ain't make no investments yet. What kind of investments? Now, think about it. Charlton White had a nice little run. He was supposed to take that money and turn it to some real money, but he don't know how to do it. He don't know how to do the clothing line. He don't know how to, he don't know how to do it. Because he was on that bus, that half a stick of margarine. Yeah, that half a bus, a.k.a. window liquor. The helmet, watch, watch me pull it up. Watch this. <laughs> watch this. I ain't making it up. I'm going to show you the bus he was on. Watch this. You might think he was on that bus. Y'all see that bus? Y'all see that tenant bus? Not the full school bus, the half a school bus. Tenant windows. You might hear motherfuckers banging on them. What the fuck is that? You know what I mean? Next thing you know, you're getting off that thing. Half a school bus. <laughs> Half a school bus in them. <laughs> Yo, I cannot make this up. I said, I said, I really did say, it came up, have a school bus in them. I know, no name what I said. Those short school buses for them special, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I said? I ain't really, I said, you know what I mean? I ain't say retard. I said, I have a school bus for you know what I mean? That's just what I said. I said, those short school buses for special, but I mean, that's, but I ain't say I mean, I said, you know what I mean? I said, yeah, I mean. Here they go. Here go them liquors. Look at them liquors, man. This is them liquors right here. This is them liquors get on. See them half of school buses? Yeah, that's Charleston White John. The liquors. You know what I mean? Look at that thing right there, man. That half a John. That, that motherfucker half a stick of margarine. <laughs> that nigga was on the half a stick of butter margarine. Trying to tell you, man. He, he know, I know. He had that helmet on. You know that helmet? Like a bike helmet. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. That nigga, you imagine what kind of helmet he had on? You know what I mean? That head? They had to get that nigga a motherfucker. <laughs> they had to put a frisbee on that nigga head. That nigga, they couldn't even give him a helmet. get a nigga a frisbee and put two holes in it and tie it in a knot. <laughs> that nigga had a flat top, so they gave, him a, uh, they gave him a frisbee. They put two frisbees and put them together and put it on his head. <laughs> So the nigga went home and they got two paper plates and tried to mimic the shit. <laughs> Yo, I can't make this up, man. Y'all know what I'm talking about, man. Motherfucker on the bus licking the whole window, drooling with snot and all that. Looking like motherfucking um, Roscoe off Martin. You know what I mean? Nigga ain't start talking to. He was like, oh, man. Y'all want to see the, this the bus he was on back in like 82, 82. 1982, he was on this joint right here. <laughs> Old school. 82 in them. 
That nigga was on an 82 jump. You know what I mean? He was on that goddamn Big Bird. You know I mean? Big, that nigga was on. Ba 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 ba. It don't get no the short bus. <laughs> it don't get no shorter than that. And I ain't disrespecting nobody, kids, that, that really kids be on that. We talking about Charles and White being on that thing, man. And you ever be in school, junior high school or high school, and you might be hooking up, playing around, and you find yourself on that third floor and it's real quiet, and you turn to your right, and you see that class, and they all in there. Or oh, in the morning, they all get off that bus, and you only see them in the morning with the teachers. You don't see them no more through the day. They will never let them out that classroom. For real, I'm on with the John Winemakers, right? Me and my homie Sean Torres and my man Keith, we ran the whole school. That was a badass school. So one day, we playing around. We like to always sneak around and see the females from 7th, 8th, and ninth grade fucking around with all of them. And one day, we was on the third floor. It was quiet as a motherfucker. My Aunt Shirley, she worked with special kids. She was their teacher. When I turned around and looked in that room, that's just, you know why it scared me? Because that whole floor was quiet. The whole third floor was quiet. And then I looked at that room. I don't know if the room was soundproof, the door, the glass, because you can't hear them in the hallway. But something just told me to look in that room. And I couldn't fucking believe what I saw, man. I seen a lot of them Charleston Whites up in that thing. Now, yes, I did. And they had the helmet on. They don't take the helmet off. I'm thinking the helmet is for the bus. They don't take them helmets off. Because them motherfuckers are banging their head on shit, man. Banging on the window like this. <laughs> and the window licker is when they just lick the window. Drooling. I ain't making this shit up, man. Believe that. And I'm not disrespecting special kids. But a ghost, demons, boogeyman, and evil people, they don't even fuck with them. And out of all the people in the world, they the ones spot the ghost first. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. Man, shut the fuck up. Ma, ma, ghost, the ghost. And they really do see that shit. They got powers, man. You seen Handy Man? On living color, <laughs> Yo, I'm not making fun. I'm just being real. I'm not. This ain't about just making fun. This is real shit. That motherfucker be like I told you. They used to call Gilly 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 TV. His mom used to call him Riri for short for retard. That's my Riri. Leave my Riri alone. How the fuck she call him Riri? You imagine Gully TV mom used to call him Riri, short for retard. Yeah, I could imagine what Charleston White mom used to call him. I don't know if she called him Baby Frisbee. <laughs> they called him nigga Baby Frisbee. And you know them helmets, them leather helmets they used to wear in the fo when football first was, when they used to wear them leather helmets, I mean them leather brown helmets. Yeah, them niggas had them. They was white, though. I said, these niggas hockey players? Man, them hockey helmets? Y'all know what I'm talking about, them hockey helmets, man, them white hockey helmets. I don't know who got it off who first. I don't know who, who had it first, y'all. Did the hockey players have it or did Charleston White and them niggas have it? Because at one time, hockey players didn't wear helmets. You know what I mean? So I don't know where they got the idea from who had it first. I'm going to Google it. Who wore them helmets first? Hockey players or Charleston White retarded ass? It's <laughs> say, hold on, let me see. I ain't making this shit up, y'all. Y'all think I'm lying. I'm not lying, y'all. This the helmet. Look, this the helmet. Man, who remember these helmets? Now, you're going to see the hockey player, right? Fair use is that. Free disclaimer, fair use is that. See that helmet right there? Who remember the motherfucking next class wearing them helmets like that? Matter of fact, I'm about to pull it up. Special kids wearing them helmets. Watch. Y'all think I'm bulls. Oh! Oh, we ain't going to show no babies. He's going to show motherfuckers, motherfuckers. God damn. Oh. They really got them helmets on. Look at Main Man. Main Man got that Charleston white on. He got that Charleston. He got that Charleston on. He got that bum, 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 bum. That's how they be. Look at him. Like he about to fuck somebody up. Charleston had that helmet on. That's how I think his hair got fucked up. That nigga didn't want to take the Frisbee off. 
Take that frisbee off, Charleston. Take it the fuck off. But mom, but mom, I'm going on Halloween, mom. I'm going to be a hockey player. I'm going to be Daryl Settler. I'm going to be, what's the boy name? Gresky. I'm Wayne Gresky. That nigga thought he was Wayne Gresky when he had that helmet on. His mom bought him the jersey and everything. He said, that's my boy. Mama, mama, I'm not never taking this jersey off. I ain't never washing my helmet, mommy. <laughs> so this is how they had to take the helmet off. They would really wait till he go to sleep and throw two Frisbees on top of his head with the string and on, you know, on the side. Yeah. Yeah, you mad nigga with the Frisbee? That nigga had the Frisbee. Real Frisbee, you throw the dogs? That nigga had two Frisbees taped together, two holes on the side with the bow. Like, you know, bows? That nigga had a bow. And that nigga was, yeah. What? Tell Charleston to show you his little kid pictures, man. He show you his pictures when he's a baby and all that. You're going to see a big ass head. The helmet and all that, man. Yeah, man. And I think he went crazy when he found out the only word he knew was mum mum. And when he said dad dad, who the fuck is dad dad? Ain't nobody going to, ain't nobody claiming you nigga. Who going to claim him with the helmet though? Now, you got you to gotta really love your child. To support them. And I'm not disrespecting nobody, kids. But when I first seen Jerry kids, Jerry Lewis kids, remember Jerry Lewis kids? Charleston is, is listen, remember Jerry Lewis should be picked a hotline up for Jerry Lewis kids? Charleston White is in that picture, man. He was there. He was part of Jerry, the Jerry Lewis Foundation. But they wasn't breaking his mom off with the proceeds, so she left because she already had money. And then when he found out what was going on, he got mad and started snapping. You know, because he had to get a jersey back. He had to get that motherfucking hockey jersey back and that hockey helmet. Yeah, because they, they, they reneged on the contract. Jerry said that's the only black kid we got. Come on. How many black kids you going to find that fast to replace Charleston White with the helmet on, man? You know what I mean? Like, they almost fucked the Jerry Lewis Foundation up. Blue Cross and the Red Cross had to step in and help out. Yeah, they had to fake and let a motherfucker... Act like he was fucked up. And he's like, man, they ain't getting his helmet back. They ain't getting their jersey back. And that's when he went buck wild, got a little older, found out what Jerry Lewis did to him and stole the starter jacket, killed part of that homicide, went to jail for 12 years, told on his homies, came home, did the activist thing, was acting nice, and realized how the parents was talking to the kids, like, fuck you, and this, that, and the third. Because Charleston didn't know how to cuss. He was from the suburbs. He didn't know how to cuss. Who knew how to cuss better than a a woman from the trenches. And Bando, he was working with kids. And I don't know why he liked to work with kids. I don't know. I don't that's a suspect to me. You know? Like, why you like kids so much, Charleston? You know? Why you never talk about your daddy, Charleston? Oh, okay. So that's that's two things that ask yourself. Why he liked kids and why it didn't work out with him. Oh, then he started disrespecting the internet. And the reason why he started disrespecting gangsters and gang members on the internet, because they treated him fucked up in the juvenile system. Because they found out he was a rat. So because he think he did the right thing by telling on his friends, he started working with the police. He didn't get back in them trenches. Only way he go back in them trenches is to cop drugs. And then when he get drunk and be with his friends, he think he's this badass nigga. What the fuck? He's a fraud, man. And I'm being real about everything I'm saying to y'all, man. And I'm freestyling this shit. Because it's the truth. Because anybody from the trenches would never talk about nobody of a city when they see trash and all that, because that's where they from. That's how you know he ain't from the trenches, man. A lot of these dudes ain't. Gully TV ain't from the trenches. Charleston White ain't from the trenches. And a lot of these YouTubers that be acting... Like they're from the trenches, they ain't from that life, man. Because anybody that talk bad about people from the trenches, they're not from the trenches. Because if you from the trenches, you ain't gonna never disrespect the trenches. I don't give a fuck how rich and how much money I ever got in my life, I never disrespected the trenches, man. I was knee deep in that shit. You know? So I'm ending on that note, man. Fully trenches, fully trenches, fully trenches. Thank y'all for sharing y'all time with me. Share this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and make sure y'all watch that video about Diddy, you know, far as dealing with those 75,000 African-American African females being missing since 2016.
See, everybody trying to throw Diddy under the bus and all these allegations and all that. See, in that industry, in that powerful world, they do a lot of heinous shit and they blackmail each other. Just like the stories that used to come on, the people watch, younger wrestlers, younger wrestlers in all my life and General Hospital and all that, all that shit is based on blackmailing somebody. And that's all they really doing is blackmailing each other. Power moves, chess moves, and all this shit. You know? I was proud to see my people come from nothing to something. Rags the riches type stories without people making big in the industry. And then they get torn down by the system all the time, man. And it's sad, but when you make it to the top, go back and get your people. You won't have this problem. OJ Simpson, when you got that bag, you went, got your people to help them, you wouldn't have that problem you had. Mayweather, you would have helped your people, you wouldn't have that problem you had. Michael Jordan, all them entertainers. The only one weathered the storm was Mike Tyson. You know why? Because while he was making money, he stayed in the trenches of New York with the gangsters and hustlers. He never forgot where he came from. That's why he can always get a bag. Because he won the real ones. He ain't forget where he came from. Everybody else did. And that's why they fall on their face like dominoes, like a domino effect, you know? But I'm not going to speak bad about Diddy because, you know what I mean? I wasn't there, that's not my business. I'm not going to get in all that, like that Nancy, whatever that lady is, that white lady with the blonde hair on a criminal ch news channel. Now all of a sudden she got something to say. Fuck out of here, man. Look that white woman. I'm going to show you this white woman. It's fucking, this shit got me mad when I seen the lady, Nancy, I think Nancy Grace or some shit like that. You know what I mean? She always got some shit to say out of her fucking mouth, man. You know what I mean? All on the bandwagon. Fuck out of here. Y'all know what I'm talking about? The white lady. I must have looked up on my um I must have watched her on this and not the tablet. No matter of fact, here she is. This fucking lady right here. I'ma show you this fucking lady. No now I'm gonna just show you her picture. I'm not gonna even let y'all see. Fair use is that free disclaimer. On the policy and rules and regulations of the copyright laws and the Infringements and stuff. See her? She talking bad about Diddy. This bitch. Yeah, you know I mean, this fucking nut ass bitch right here. Yeah, you know I mean, Nancy Grace talking about Diddy. Fuck out of here, bitch. Talk about them fucking seventy five thousand African American women that's missing. Talk about that shit, bitch. Fuck Nancy Grace. Nappy head bitch just trying to get a check. Yeah, you know I mean. Fuck her, man. I hate fake people like that, man. Ain't none of them going to talk about them 75,000 African-American females that's missing. But they want to talk about him. Fuck out of here, man. Eat a fucking, eat an elephant's fucking ass, bitch. Hate motherfuckers like that, man. Now everybody want to jump on the bandwagon and talk about him. The fuck out of here, man. That's our problem, man. We don't take care of our own, man. We don't mind our own business. We don't, like, let that shit be in-house. Like, we pull the government ourselves, handle our own. We don't leave our motherfucking people out to them wolves to devour. Just like in Tulsa, Oklahoma, when they try to hang that man in 1920. What the blacks do? See, you're not going to fucking hang him. He ain't do shit wrong. He ain't touch that white woman. And all hell broke loose. But I tell you, even though they fucking got the National Guard, the government, the Italian Mafia, the Irish Mafia, and all the Ku Klux Klan, to jump them and jump all these cities that are full of black Wall Streets around the United States, at least they stood the fuck up for that boy. A lot of them got killed, but guess what? They stood up for him, man. And that's how we got standing for our own, man. Stop letting them motherfuckers disrespect our people and torture our people. Because when they see that we divided, they're going to keep doing that to us, man. They're going to keep doing that shit. They're going to keep promoting negativity about us so we won't rise up, man. When this shit going to stop? When we going to rise together? Hey, every other race rise together but us. We the only one ain't together, man. We the only one. 
Fully trenches, fully trenches, fully trenches, man. Share the video.